Okay, so we're going to start and add a some different effects to our photo here. And we're going to start with adding a texture over top of the layers just to kind of blend the different um, tones of the layers together. It kind of unifies the image and adds an overall effect on top of our image. This image not, doesn't necessarily need a texture because there's so much going on in the background, but I want to show you how to do that just so you know how to do it. So I grabbed just a couple images offline. And if I press Control A, it will select the whole thing, but I could have selected it with any of these selection tools. Um, so Control A, and then I'm going to go and Control C, or go to Edit and Copy, and then go over here to my Surreal Scene and Control V and paste this. So as you can see, I got this offline and it's quite small. So I hope that it doesn't get too pixelated when I stretch it out. So I am going to Control T to stretch this out. And it will look very pixelated as I stretch it out. But once I hit enter, it usually sharpens back up, which it did. It sharpened up quite nicely. So right now you can see this texture is overlaying all my other layers here. And so what I need to do is blend this texture with the layers below it. So to do that, I'm going to drop down and use these blending modes here in my layers panel. So the drop down menu here goes over quite a few different ways to blend the picture. So usually I just start at normal. And I scroll through on my mouse and kind of see what the different effects look like on my picture. So that one's kind of cool. Lighten. It adds. You can see some of my picture through it. So I'm just kind of looking. And then I, I remember, too, you can also play with the opacity of the layer to make the effect a little bit more subtle. If this looks too strong. Exclusion. That's kind of neat. Colors. Neat. Usually I tend to use. Um, soft light or overlay, quite strong in this case. So I can go here and kind of make it a little bit less. So that's before and after. If it's too busy, you don't have to use a texture overlay. Let's try a different one. I'm going to turn this one off and just leave, um, click on the eye icon and it'll make it so it will disappear. It's still there, but it's just invisible. I'm going to try this one instead. Control A to copy it or to select it and now Control C to copy. Control V to paste. This one's much larger, so Control T. I'm just going to stretch it past my page. So this one's kind of a lighting effect. So it could have some cool um, kind of luminous qualities to it once I blend it with my picture. So you can kind of see it there. It adds some cool kind of orbs of light. So I think on overlay, it works quite well. Maybe even it's it's the only thing on this layer. So if I wanted to, I could like only have this on the sky and not the ground if I wanted to. And I could just select it and delete it. Press backspace and delete it from like the ground thing. Just leave it on the sky. Of course, I just did that with a very hard selection tool. So I'm going to step back. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my ground layer back here and I'm just going to reselect this with my selection tool so I can get a better more accurate selection so what I'm doing is I'm selecting the mountains that I had selected before and I am going to then go up to the top layer here and delete, just press delete. So I selected it on my background layer so I can get the exact shape of the mountains. And then I'm gonna go up to where I added this texture layer and just press delete so it deletes it off of my mountain area and off of my land. And I just quickly did that. You could be more careful with the selection if you needed to. So now I just have this overlaid on my sky, which you can see is pretty cool. So I wanna be careful. If I do move this, I have to make sure that I get rid of it off the bottom here. So I just selected it and pressed delete. Now it's just in the sky area. So that actually looks pretty cool. And I can play with the intensity. Now if I add back this other texture, it might be too much. I'm not sure. I don't think that I like it. I'm just going to delete it. You can also get rid of the um, this layer or anything with the eraser tool. So remember, I could have gone on to and just erased it. So these little, I moved that over a little. So it got a little misaligned. I could have gone through and just made a really big brush and erased it off here as well. 
but that looks pretty good. So next, what I'm going to do is add a couple more lighting effects. So just like we in the past have painted on photographs, we can do the same thing by going um, and adding a new blank layer. You could add text, you could add paint, you could add um, gradients, whatever you want. I just add a new layer, it's a blank layer, and I'm going to paint on that. So with this paint, I wanted to show you a gradient. So down here, under the eraser tool, is a gradient tool. It may have the paint bucket tool there, it's nested within the paint bucket tool. So I'm gonna choose the gradient, and up here you can see that the gradient right now is going from black to white. What I want it to do is I want it to go from black to the background picture, which this checkerboard represents. So that way it'll fade. I'm just going to cancel out of that. It's going to fade from the color I choose to the picture. And you'll see what that looks like in a second. So I'm going to go down here and switch the color to white. So it's going from white to um, the background picture. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose the type or the direction of the gradient. So this is going to be radial, so it's going to be almost like a starburst. So I could go, and I'll show you an example here, I could go between the sky and the land, and I could drag this layer between the sky and the land here. And I could go and drag and pull, and it would make kind of a sunburst or like a glowing type of um, orb behind the land. So it kind of separates the sky from the land. So it's on its own layer, so I can click it on and off. I could also go in and play with the blending modes to kind of make it a little more subtle. Um, and I can play with the opacity too. Because I made it on its own layer, I have full control over what is happening to that. So I could also do that up here, say, I could add a new one. And I could go through, and like have it come from the corner to be like a light source if I wanted to. I could kind of play with the blending modes there. So you're really playing around with the order of the layers and the different blending modes that are happening there.